In this video, I'm going to tell you about primers and try to help you pick the right color for your next project. So in pretty much every single situation in our hobby, if you are about to take paint on a brush and put it onto a model, there should be a layer of primer between the, the model and the paint you're about to apply. That's just always the way it works. Unless you buy like those pre those pre-primed models from WizKids that they've just recently put out with the Dungeons and Dragons and the Pathfinder and stuff like that, uh, those you should in theory be able to paint directly on because they evidently have primer uh, already applied. But if it's something else you've built, whether it's plastic, metal, resin, whatever, it's always, always a good idea to do a good job priming, get decent coverage, but not too much, and then let it dry completely before you start going forward and beginning to paint. But I get asked quite frequently, well, what, what primer should I use? What, what brand, you know, should I use? And everybody's got their favorite brand. Everybody's got their favorite, um, you know, whether it's a spray can, airbrush, Krylon, uh, Games Workshop, Army Painter. There's, there's lots of different uh, brands. And I'm not very brand specific, actually. I use the primer that will work for the situation that I am currently in. If I'm trying to paint something specific, it's always important to tailor your primer to the project versus trying to tailor your project to the primer. You know what I'm saying? If you're just like, well, I only have black primer, but I have to paint all these very delicate, lovely, pale, uh, you know, elf ladies, that's, that's probably not going to work. You're, you're going to want to go get something else for primer and not start with, you know, uh, black or um, uh, bright green. That would be weird, I suppose. So for years, there were the main colors of primer. You had black primer, you had white primer, and usually you had gray primer, which could be anything from a light gray to a dark gray, depending on the manufacturer and who you were talking to. And uh, really, uh, you know, there were very simple times when you would use certain primers. If you were painting, um, you know, darker models, space marines uh, who were in, you know, in darker hues um, or, um, you know, army soldiers that were supposed to be dark, it was generally better thought to spray them in black. Um, because then any times that you missed anything, like if you were painting and you missed a little bit of the armpit area or whatever, the black color would turn into basically like a shadow. So spraying them in black and then painting up from there. And by painting up, I mean up to a lighter color, let's say olive drab, if you were going with some sort of military theme. Um, that's, that's not that hard of a thing to do. Now, there were other people that would say, no, 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 you should never do black. You should always do light because it'll bring the colors out and make them pop a lot more. But sometimes you don't want the colors to pop. Other times you do. So there were situations in which either black or white primer uh, was, I think, important. You had camps of people who believed in only this one or only that one. But I've always been the kind of guy who says, use the primer that works best for the model that, or models that you're currently working on. But times have changed. There are lots and lots of different types of primers now, and I'm not just talking about the difference between airbrush or rattle can or, I don't know, enamel versus acrylic. I'm talking about colors. So not all of these are specifically primers, but you don't have to use a specific, it says primer on the can primer. You can use other paints sometimes. You want to test it and try it out. But that's what your Uncle Adam's here to tell you about, at least my experience, so that you can maybe go and try to learn your own and, and see how it works for you. Um, I did a video about this Krylon stuff, Krylon camouflage, uh, a while back. You can watch it up here. Pachow. It's the only review that I've ever done on the channel, really. And uh, this stuff is amazing. There are six colors. There's a black, a dark brown, two tans. One of these is a tan and two green colors. Um, if you can get something close to this for what you're painting, these are the way to go because of mainly the, the reason that you can save yourself a step. A good primer, a smart choice in primer always saves you a step. And what I mean is if you have to spray your, let's say, blood angels and you spray them all black because you want them to be darker. So you've put a red, you know, you want them to be red. And, and so you're going to use a black primer because that's dark versus the light. And some people maybe want to go with the, well, I want them to be real bright, super bright red. So maybe you're going to go with white, whichever, but you're going to start off with either black or red as a primer. Great. You can do that. That's fine. But then you're going to have to paint them red. 
and you either are going to have to cover over the black or put many layers on to try to help also offset the white. So you've got different options there. But if you use something like a red oxide sandable auto primer from the parts store for six, seven bucks for can, and you spray them in this dark red or almost kind of a brownish red color, that's a great base for a prime right there for let's say Blood Angels. So now you've got this nice warm shadow color underneath and then you can now spray them all red from let's say kind of above. That's sort of the trick to, and I've done a video about that as well, about rattle can tricks, but it works with them um, with airbrushing as well. The rattle can tricks video, ciao, you can watch that up there. But the fact is, is that if you are thinking ahead, let's say you're gonna do, I don't know, ultramarines. There are companies out there that make perfect like ultramarine blue ultramarine was a color before it was a, a a chapter fyi just you know i learned about ultramarine blue in, in art class and it's been around for thousands of years probably but uh you know ultramarine blue in our hobby means something a little different anyway army painter sells cans and they're expensive but they do the job and you prime and base coat in one step and i think that that's really important if you can spend the extra money and, and, and save yourself some time, that helps you get that big pile of plastic um, whittled down so that you can actually start playing with a painted army. So picking the right color, if you were doing Imperial Guard, you could use, if they were going to be like some sort of military type color, you could use this kind of stuff. If you were painting United States forces for uh, Conflict 47 or Bolt Action or something like that. You could use this color. If you were going to do a bunch of skeletons, I would start with a color like this, a very tan. Spray them, then wash them, and then highlight up with some dry brushing with some like bleached bone. Something like that. Um, I would not use a blue primer and then try to paint the rest of the, you know, the skeletons in the regular skeleton colors because that's a, that's a very different uh, effect. You're going from a very cool color, the blue, to a very warm color, that tan. So in those situations, you think ahead. If you're painting uh, dark angels who are a dark green, you could start with a color like this military dark green and then spray the, the normal color or dry brush or highlight with a brush or paint or however you want to do it. But thinking about not just like, I either have to use black or white primer. There are a lot of other things you can use out there as primer. Some of them technically aren't primers. Some of them are primers, but for let's say cars, but they'll still work and they will work very well for your project. You might have to do a little bit of searching. You might have to go into some auto zones or some um, uh, car uh, X. No, I don't, I can't think of any other place other than auto zone around here. O'Reilly, I think is a place that sells car stuff. You might have to go into some of those places. You might have to look around a little bit online, go to some hardware stores. Um, it, you don't for primer always have to stick to the stuff that um, the, the model companies will sell you. That being said, the model companies are doing more and more to try to get you to stay within their ecosystem by making some really nice colored primers, again, to save you a step. And it's not just big old rattle cans either. Um, I've talked a lot of times about how airbrushing has really helped me being able to prime all year long, you know, even when it's, you know, a foot of snow outside. And Vallejo is one of my favorites, but there's also Steinal Res made by Badger. They're also very good, and I use a little bit of both. Um, I just happen to have these nearby, which is why I grab them. I've got a big bottle of Steinal Res, but it's in my airbrush room, and it comes in a silver color. I've never come across a silver primer before, but it is amazing if you were going to be painting, I don't know, let's say Necrons, or let's say all the undercarriage kind of linkage bits for, I don't know, like an Imperial Knight. If you were able to prime it all silver, you're already a step ahead because you've primed it and also now base coated it. You throw some wash on it, you let that dry, you start doing some dry brushing and highlighting, picking out details going from there. Um, for my upcoming Space Marine Army, they're going to be this color blue for the primer. So I bought a bunch of little bottles of the... Um, surface primer from Vallejo that's designed for airbrush. For my skeletons and things like that, if I need to be able to work on a bunch of my death army in the winter and I can't go outside and use this kind of rattle can with a nice tan color or one, or the other one from uh, uh, Krylon, Vallejo also makes bone color as well. And this is also a surface primer. This is designed for airbrush. Generally, I can take this and drop it right into the cup in my airbrush, spray, go to town, let it dry. The thing about definitely about airbrush is that you need to let it dry for a good 24 hours. Do not airbrush, feel it. Oh, it's not even tacky anymore. Awesome. And then start painting because it is not properly 
adhered. It has not properly cured. So it's really a good idea to let any kind of airbrush uh, primer definitely let it sit for at least a day before you start going at it with a brush. I even generally kind of do that with um, normal sprays. The Krylon sprays have this fusion technology, which may be mumbo jumbo, but they say it's molecular molecularly binds to the plastic. So if you're painting plastic models and you spray them with this stuff, I have done it in the morning and then started painting later on in the evening and not had any problems. But again, that's kind of a very specific, if I was spraying this stuff or any kind of rattle can on metal, I would let it sit the entire 24 hours. Putting the, the thought in ahead of time, thinking about what do I need to do? What's my final product going to look like? And then deciding I'm going to do a little bit extra work and try to find the right primer. Sharpening your ax before you start chopping wood can actually cause it so that you can get through the project quicker because if you have to prime everything in black and then bring it all back up to red because you're doing, let's say, again, Blood Angels or whatever, that's going to take longer than finding a nice dark red at the auto parts store, spraying that on there, letting that dry, spritzing it from above with a nice red that's more close to what you want for your blood angels in this situation, letting that dry, and then going in, doing washes, starting to do details, and things like that. It's I know to a lot of people the concept of priming, and, and that can be, can be daunting, but if you just think about what you want to do, if you want bright poppy colors, you're going to probably want to go with a lighter color, like let's say white. If you want darker grittier, you're going to go, want, want to go with something dark. But if there's an overall color to your models, you know, if it's a soldier color for their uniform or their power armor or their, uh, you know, strange alien uh, chitness, uh, whatever, exoskeletons, try to find a primer that matches or is pretty close to that color, potentially maybe a little bit darker if you like to highlight up or a little bit lighter if you like to kind of darken down. And then use that stuff, invest the money, go out, buy yourself a good, you know, a good primer to really help move your project along. And it doesn't always have to be expensive. You can find stuff at the auto parts store. Spending time thinking about the priming before you jump into a big project can always benefit you down the road and cause it so that you can make something that you're going to be happier with more quickly so that you can get on to the rest of the plastic that you also have in your drawers and cupboards and basement.